What's up everybody? Uh, welcome to the No Bullshit Guide for Aiming and Sensitivity. Um, to get a few things out of the way first, uh, yes, higher DPI is more reactive than lower DPI. Uh, arguably a little bit faster uh, in terms of responsive or response time, but not to a point where it matters. Uh, to put things into perspective, 400 DPI is can, can measure a movement of 63 microns so 0 0.063 millimeters uh, you're not going to be able to move your hand less than that and it, it's it's just not necessary um, most sensors well the way a sensor works uh, on a mouse is that you have light that hits your surface of your mouse pad you have a one-to-one -one lens that then i guess throws the light back into the sensor and the sensor has a grid of a certain amount of counts or dots um, when you when you make your dpi much higher than the native of the sensor you start subdividing that sensor which doesn't give you a better tracking or anything it just simply uses something that kind of resembles anti-aliasing on your sensor so for most people you want to keep your sensitivity be or your dpi sorry between 400 800 or 1600. 1600 is more if you're up in the um, 4k monitors and stuff like that then there's a good reason to be made for that. Uh, don't use a higher DPI because you think it, it's more accurate or anything in game. Uh, the only times that will work is if you go to much older games or you have an immense high DPI and a very low sensitivity or a very, very low DPI and a very high sensitivity. For most people, this is not gonna matter. When we talk about sensitivity in game, an easy way to compare different sensitivities in the same game is to use what we call eDPI, which is your sensitivity in game, so the one you have on your slider, and your DPI com or combined. Um, so if we take, uh, I have a slide here, if we say uh, 12, 12 at 400 DPI, that will be 4,800 eDPI when we uh, when we multiply those together. And this is with the default um, mouse sensitivity or mouse multiplier in your game setting.ini, which you can find in your document folder slash my games slash rainbow six and then in the um, hash file of of your account um so if 400 times 12 is 4800 and 800 times 6 is 4800 and 1600 times 3 is 4800 then all of these sensitivities will be the exact same distance on your mousepad to do a 360. Um, there is no real difference in any of these one thing that does matter though is let's say you're at 400 dpi 1111 which i am currently then there's no way for me to do 800 at 5 5 or 5.5 5, 5 and a half so therefore i have to be at 400 to do that or i have to stop messing around with changing my mouse sensitivity multiplier um as you can see below here um when you take your mouse sensitivity multiplier and you for example lower it by 90 percent uh, you're gonna get a lot more precise uh, increments in in your changes because instead of having six six at 800, you have 60. Um, so that means now you can do you know 6.1, which would be 61. The problem then becomes depending on how you change your mouse uh, multiplier that some things won't be achievable. Uh, looking at 400 dpi, you simply can't go to 120 on the slider because the slider goes from zero, well one to 100. Uh, but there will be a link in the description that has all of this explained from a dev blog where you can go in and calculate uh, how you can change your mouse multiplier. The same for your ADS multiplier. Your ADS multiplier is nothing more but a multiplier of your hip fire sensitivity. There isn't any magic in it. It's simply just some math equations of how you get to certain, certain steps. Um, this matters a little bit in depending on what site you're using. So for example, the, the zoomed in field of view of a hollow site is different than the zoomed in field of view of an ACOG, for example, and that affects your sensitivity. So if you're on a standard um, standard settings and you use 83 on your, on your ADS sensitivity, well, actually it should be 83.333, um, that will be a one-to-one. -one. So you will have, let's say 12-12 for your sensitivity hip fire and you put it at 83, then you will have the same uh, 360, whether you're ADS or un-ADS. Um, it's not necessarily better, but it's a good 
good way of, or it's a good thing to know that that's how they correlate. Uh, there are settings as your X factor multiplier. You can go in and change, which will change the slider of your um, of your ADS sensitivity in the game. Pulling rate. So most mice uh, go from a thousand pulling rate, have a couple different settings, a thousand five hundred. Uh, I think mine has two fifty as well. Some have one twenty five. Basically, ignore everything but five hundred and a thousand. So a thousand is just one millisecond delay and 500 is 2 milliseconds delay. You might think that 1000 is just straight up better and there's nothing to be argued there. Um, it is faster, sure. But the problem is that the way your USB bus works, asking basically your mouse or you, your CPU is asking your mouse a thousand times a second, did you move, did you move, did you move? And it's not necessary because of the, the increments that you move on screen and Basically, the G force you put into to flicking your mouse, you're you're not fast enough that a thousand or five hundred is ever going to make a difference in terms of if you hit a shot or not. But lowering the, I guess the overhead you can call it on your CPU, could matter if you don't have a strong CPU. So for some people uh, and in some games and with some PC specs, having a thousand DPI can cause a little bit more mouse stutter in game. I run at five hundred because if I blind test it myself, I can't tell the difference. Um, I can easily play at a thousand and it doesn't seem to change anything for me. I'm far from a, a competent good aimer. But if I can't if I can't feel or notice the difference, then it's not worth the potential mouse stutter that, that could be caused. Uh, on that note, I'm not a fan of raw input either in Siege. Uh, I've had quite a few issues with increased mouse stutter and just something resembling a little bit of um, frame stutter or things like that. Uh, and when you measure it, uh, if you put a ruler on your, your mouse pad and you, you just measure your 360, they don't seem to change. So I keep that off. Uh, I'll turn it on if I start getting issues, but until I have issues with it, there's no point in, in me having that, that setting on. Um, I mean, the basic window setting, if, if anyone has messed with that, keep your, keep your Windows mouse setting at default and make sure that you have enhanced pointer precision turned off because that just makes sure that there is no um, no extra acceleration or angle snapping from your mouse. You kind of want to kind of want to remove all the extra settings. Most mice comes with come with these uh, softwares where you can change a shit ton of things, but all you ever really need to is to stay close to your native DPI of your mouse or at least a multiplier of that. So if we take something like a Sawi Easy 2 uh, B for example, it has steps of 400, 800, 1600 and 3200. All of those are fine to use. There's no point in making it higher or lower than that. Uh, I'm using an end game XM1 right now and running at uh, 400 DPI. If I wanted to run at 800 DPI, it would be because it's more comfortable in Windows. But seeing as I spend most of my time playing, my all my settings are set up for, for playing. All right, let's talk grips and low sense versus high sense. So I think everyone knows that you have your fingertip grip, your palm grip, and your claw grip. I'm gonna kinda just let you uh, figure out whatever is, is comfortable for you. We just can't say that one is, is better than the other. Uh, you're gonna have to try all of them and, and see what you aim better with. The idea that you can't be good with high sensitivity is not true. There's plenty of people that play with extremely high sensitivity. I wouldn't recommend it though, but it's more for I mean, you you are way more likely to get wrist issues, stuff like that, carbon tunnel syndrome, if you play with a high sensitivity and you only use your wrist. One of the big reasons that um, big arm movement and stuff like that became a thing if you go a couple of years back in, in competitive gaming was to save yourself from, from injuries. Another good argument for running a low sensitivity is that, or EDPI, is that you basically make the target bigger on your mouse pad. So if you imagine that when you have a low sensitivity, the, the head or the, the other player that you're gonna be shooting is gonna be bigger proportionally on your mouse pad than if you had a lower sensitivity, higher sensitivity, sorry. Um, there, there is more, um, more control over your movement when you use your arm and your wrist. Uh, one of the reasons you see competitive players have their keyboard slanted is so they can get their you know bigger mouse pad to fit on the table. 
might be the reason that they have their monitors canted a bit as well. And that mainly stems from uh, LAN and tournament environments not having a lot of space. But when you're at home and you have a, a giant desk, you might as well have a giant mouse pad as well. I'll recommend that everyone give it a try to play on, on a much lower sensitivity than what they think. Because if we look at most people, um, when they come in and ask what's your sensitivity or how do I get better, I'm not comfortable in my aim, most see improvement when they just simply lower their sensitivity. Um, it, it makes it much easier to correct for errors. And when you make an error, if you if you get you know shocked in game or you get surprised, you don't all of a sudden do a 360 flick and look at the roof. Having this this lower sensitivity makes you more steady. It makes uh, crosshair placement and movement and tracking a lot easier. But it will make you know doing your 180 uh, super MLG flick a lot harder. Ideally, that isn't shouldn't really matter because most of your gunfight should be having it happening within 30 to 60 field of view of the center of your screen if you aren't looking at the the player by the time you start engaging him he should be winning if you're playing against people at the same skill level so that's where we're going to jump into crosshair placement and aim uh one of the most common questions i get is how do i get better aim i think People are asking the wrong question because most of the time it's not so much your aim as it is your crosshair placement. If you look at newer players or just unexperienced players, a lot of them will walk around looking quite far down. I, I'm not sure why, if it's because they feel like they can see more over their weapon or something. But if I come around the corner here, we have an alibi over there, one there and one there. If I come around the corner here and I'm looking down like this and I have to see this guy now and then ADS, and aim up there. That's such a waste of movement, right? This is where the crosshair placement comes in because you could have amazing aim and be able to flick from here to up here with no problem quickly. But this guy, even if he has, you know, half your aim, is still going to beat you because of that movement there. So when you come around instead, you want to be looking at the door. I make a choice. Either you stick for head height or you stick for, for crouch height, right? Or sorry, standing or, or crouched. But you want to be looking at where the next threat is going to be. That You should always do that no matter what. So when we come up to the door here, I want to be ready for this, this door coming up over here. Maybe the long angle, right? There's still space for someone to be here. So you want to, you want to pre-aim and have the crosshair placement fixed for that. And then when you swing in here, you want to check all these places where people could be. And now you can see without really having any kind of aim, just the crosshair placement helps me be close to this guy and I only have to correct like that instead of coming around the corner like this and then uh oh now I have to shoot so if you worry a lot more about having better crosshair placement than you do about having better aim then it's going to be a lot easier for you to um to get better right when you see uh when you see people run around and, and shoot all of these things on the map every time the round starts you see people run around try to flick from one pot to another right it's not because there's any any good point in doing it it's simply just a little bit of muscle memory practice in the start of the round so all of these pots here when you see people do that it's not because there's some there's no magic to it man it's it's just something we do to try and keep uh keep sharp you know the same goes if you were to jump into a tea hunt and you want to actually practice your aim you got to stop worrying about winning the tea hunt no one cares if you win or lose a tea hunt right you don't have spectators sitting there cheering when you win your goal is to get better so if you put your um if you put your gun on semi-auto and you walk through this tea hunt making sure that you only ever kill with headshots and you take whatever time you need to do this Then you do this a couple of times, you're going to notice you get faster and faster. Eventually, you jump in a T-Hunt, you put it on full auto, and you just see how fast you can get through it. You're going to notice that your accuracy actually increased. It's a lot easier to get more accurate and then speed up than it is to try and be fast with bad accuracy. Because you're going to build these bad habits of being really, really quick, but either shooting too early. So this is something a lot of people do. They will come around, they will see a target here, 
I do this a, a lot myself as well. Um, I'll come around, I'll see the target and I'll start shooting already here. Now I have to like control it over to the head, right? Instead of coming around, having the, the not so good crosshair placement, waiting until I'm close or onto target and then start shooting. Because this movement from here to here is just as quick to get that headshot as it is to start spraying here and then getting it on, on target. Then you also don't have to deal with recoil management and all of that stuff. Um, when it comes to recoil, um, there isn't any magic to it in Siege. Um, Siege doesn't have proper predictable recoil. It works in a way where... Let me find a wall here. You have something called a diamond. So, a diamond shape like this. When my first bullet is fired here, the next bullet will have to land within the diamond. So let's say the next bullet lands here. Then a new diamond will be formed. And my next bullet will have to land within this diamond. Right? So that could land up here, it could land here, 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 whatever. That's how the recoil works in Siege. Different guns have different uh, different diamond shapes and different patterns, but they're still going to have some sort of um, variability. So if we shoot this, this isn't, you know, the highest recoil gun in the game. But you can see here, there's a few outliers that, that jump a little bit more to the different side of the diamond than, than the others. But basically, it just goes up and a little bit to the left. So for controlling this, all we have to do is pull straight down and then maybe adjust a little bit to the right. It's not a lot. You can see that's where these ones are where the diamond jumps. So I had a shot here. The next one's here. I pull down to try and adjust and there's a little bit of diamond jump here. This is different from gun to gun. It's different from uh, different guns with different attachments. So your compensator is going to lower your overall diamond shape. Your flash hider will do that a little bit as well, whereas your muscle break will only help with the one shot, um, one shot recoil. So the next bullet in line, which will make it easier to get two shots close to each other. But that's about it. Uh, I will be making a guide uh, on attachments, trying to debunk a little bit of the stuff going on there. Um, but for now, this should be enough to uh, to jump in and try and improve your aim. Try to make sure that when you practice, you actually try to practice your aim instead of doing it as fast as you can. Do something that's reliable, something you can replicate, and something where you can get measurements that are, are easy to see. Because if you start seeing a little bit of an improvement, there is that carrot at the end of the stick that makes you want to try again. If you set too high goals and you want to be able to just sprint through a T-Hunt and one-tap everything at the speed of light and you're not able to, you're just going to burn out too quickly. The only way to actually get better with aiming is to practice and to play, lower your sensitivity. Don't worry about trying every damn sensitivity out there, it doesn't matter. Um, as for the in-game settings, so I'm at 400, 11-11, uh, 35 right now. I'm not going to be able to do this exact same sensitivity with 800, but what I could do is I could try 6, so that would be the same as 12-12, then I can swap here on my mouse to 800, and now in-game I have almost exactly the same sensitivity as I had before, right? Nothing's changed. My 180 is almost exactly the same, but that's where we use the EDPI uh, calculations.